In this video, I'll go through the Year 7 Decimals, Percentages and Ratios test preview. If you're following along with the test preview, I'll put some timestamps in the description below to help you skip the question numbers. Otherwise, I'll put a brief description of what the questions are about down there as well if you're looking for help with a particular sort of question. And one would like us to put inequality symbols in between numbers. Okay? So when you do inequality symbols, it's one of those greater than or less than symbols. And it matters which way you put it around. So if you look down the bottom here, I've written a larger number and I've written a smaller number. And so we need to put a symbol in to show which one's larger and smaller. And it goes this way, like this. And if you can't remember which way it goes, I often think about this as being a bit like Pac-Man. And Pac-Man will always eat the larger number. So if we have a look at them up in our questions here, I've got 0 0.84 and 0 0.725. Now, looking at the first number, well, they've both got a 0, but after the decimal, the first number is 8, or the first number is 7, so the number on the left will be bigger. So we put our inequality symbol in this way. Have a look at the second example, we've got a zero and a zero, a decimal and a decimal, an eight and an eight, a two and a zero. Okay, so the one on the left is bigger again, so the inequality symbol will go in the same direction. In question two, we need to round these numbers down, and the little number that's in brackets here shows us how many decimal places we need to round it to. So it's asking you to round this to one decimal place. That means one number after the decimal. So sometimes it helps if you put a line in like that. And when you go to decide um, what it will be in one decimal place, you write four points. But before you write this number here, you have a quick look at the next number. And if it's five or more, then this 6 here becomes a 7, okay? So it goes up by a number. So let's have a look again at the second example. In the second example, it wants two decimal places. So we're going to have to write two numbers after the decimal. This time we write 5.9, but before we write the 1, have a look at the next number. It's less than 5, so the 1 will stay the same this time. So the rule is always check to see if the next number is five or more. In question three, we're rounding money, and money is a little bit different to normal decimals because in Australia, if we're paying in cash, we have to round to the nearest five cents. That means that we're either going to go up or down. So if we've got $7.35, it's closer for me to go down to $7.35 than it is for me to go up to $7.40. So we're going to round this one down. In the second example, we've got $782. And then better for me to go up one to 15 cents on to 10 cents. So I'm going to round up by one cent. It's probably important to notice here that if this question had been different and it was $782.13, we would still go up to $782.15. But if it was $782.12, for example, we would go down to $0.10. So, if this number's three or higher, you'll go up. In question four, we're going to need to convert 8.4 into a fraction. Now, if we have got one number after the decimal like this, they're talking about tenths. So, 8.4 is the same as writing is the same as writing eight and four tenths. And so even we, though now we've moved this into a fraction form, 
did also ask us here to make it in its simplest form. So we're going to say 8, and I can see that 2 will go into both 4 and 10. It will go into 4 2 times, and it will go into 10 5. If you're not sure about this, you need to go back to the last unit, which was fractions, and watch a couple of the videos there. But we are creating a, a, sim, a simple equivalent fraction or equivalent fraction that's in its simplest form. In question five, we need to convert nine twenty fifths into a decimal form. Now, doing this is quite tricky if you've got a number like twenty five at the bottom. It becomes much easier if you've got a 10 or a 100. So one way of doing this would be to multiply 25 by 4 to turn it into 100. But don't forget that anything that you do to the bottom, you also must do to the top. Okay. So an equivalent fraction for this would be 36 over 100. And it's nice and easy once you've got it over 100 because then it just becomes 0 0.36. And it's really important that you can move between fractions and decimals like this. There's really two parts to question 6 and it also builds a bit on question 5. In, in some ways we're kind of moving um, between um, fractions and decimals again because if we just get distracted for a second and look over here we know that 0 0.36 is the same as 36 percent because percent means the same as per 100 or uh, divided by 100 so if we have to write 65 percent as a fraction then 65% is going to be 65 per cent. Cent means 100, okay? So really these two things mean exactly the same thing. They're just written in a different way. The second part of this question is that we have to write this fraction in its simplest form. So I'm looking for a number that both... 65 and 100 can be divided by and I, I know that I can divide top and bottom by 5 so that's a great starting point. 5 will go into 65 13 times and 5 will go into 120 times and that's as far as I can go with this fraction so that's my answer. Question 7 is a nice easy one, 55% as a decimal. When you practice this enough, you'll be able to move this straight down to 0 0.55. But if you're wondering how I do that, when I write 55%, I see it as 55 per cent. 55 per 100. And remembering that when it is per 100, we write to two decimal places. So this one becomes 0 0.55. Either way, we'll get you to the same answer. With practice, you'll see that this one jumps straight down into decimal. Question 8, we have to write a small fraction, a fifth, as a percentage. Okay, so we're really just writing this as a larger fraction. So remember in the last topic we did equivalent fractions and in the first set of questions they asked you to write equivalent fractions and that's really what we're doing here. Okay, I'm making this one an equivalent fraction that's over 100 because percent or percentage means per 100. So I have a look at 5 and I say, what did I do to 5 to turn it into 100? I multiplied it by 20. Anything I did to the bottom, I had to do to the top. So now I know that I've got 1 times 20, which is 20 over 100. And 20 over 100 means 20 
per 100 or 20 per cent. So the answer is 20 per cent. There's a couple of ways of doing question nine, so I'll show you a, a couple of different approaches. If you like fractions and you like working with them, um, then one way to do this would be to write 15 per cent, 15 over 100, and multiply it by the 200. Okay. To do this a little easier, what you can do is you can make 200 over 1, and then you can solve this. Okay. So 15 times 200 leaves you with 3,000, and 100 times 1 leaves you 100. Zeros can be crossed out. And that will leave you with the answer, $30. Another way to do this, and this is the way that I use when I go shopping, is that rather than try to find out what 15% of 200 is, I find out what 10% of 200 is. And the way that you do 10% is you just take a zero off the end, okay? So 10% of 200 is $20, which means that 5% is half of that, which is $10. So 15% of 200 will be 20 plus 10, which is $30. Both methods are good, but whichever one makes most sense to you. Question 10 is a tricky little question without a calculator, but we'll have a go anyway. So we have got seven puppies all together in this pet shop and four of them are male. So what percentage is this? So that means that we've got four of seven puppies being male. A way to do this um, is we can do some division down here. So what we'll do is we'll try putting 7 into 4. And that obviously won't work. So we'll give it several um, decimal places. That should be about enough, I think. And we will um, work this out as a, a decimal. And then we'll convert it over into a percentage. So we know that. If we look back here at four sevenths, it's going to be a little bit over half. Okay, so let's see how we go. Will seven go into four? No, it won't. Will it go into 40? Yes, it will. Five times to make 35 with five remaining. Will seven go into 50? Yes, it will. Seven times with one remainder. Will seven go into 10? Yes, it will. Once with three remainers. Will it go into 30? Yes, it will. Four times to make 28 with two remainers. Will it go into 20? Yeah, it will. Two times to make 14 with six remainers, etc., etc. But I think we've got enough decimals here now, okay? When we convert our decimals here into a percentage, remember what's going to happen is the decimal place is going to land here, okay, instead. Technically, the, the numbers are actually jumping left, but we'll just say that the decimal is moving two places, okay, even though that's not technically what's happening. And that will make the answer 57.14%. And we've successfully um, changed that fraction into Question 11 is a ratio question. This is a nice easy one. The only thing we got to watch is that we've got to get the numbers in the right order, okay? So it's hashtags, two, and symbols. So if you go through and you count your hashtag symbols, one, two, three, it will be a ratio of three, two. And then if we count up our and symbols, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's an answer of three, two, seven. 
Question 12 is a long addition question. So Cam's gone to the shop, he's bought bananas for $2.39. He's bought apples for $1.18 and he has bought lentils for $3.45. How much did he pay? And then we also have to round to the nearest five cents, but we'll deal with that at the end. So let's add these up. We've got 9 plus 8 makes 17, plus 5 makes 22. So we'll drop our two units and carry our two tens. We've got 2 plus 3 makes 5, 5 plus 1 makes 6, 6 plus 4 makes 10. So we'll drop the 0 units and we'll carry the n. Now we've got 1 plus 2 plus 1 makes 4, plus 3 makes 7. So we've got a total of $7.02, but remember we needed to round it to the nearest 5 cents. So 2 is below 3, or closer to 0, so we're going to round this up, and altogether he has spent $7.00.